All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Music Mastery Podcast with your host, Leezy the Gifted, and I have an extremely special guest. I would, I would call this guy a super producer, somebody who I've been following for a long time, who definitely is going to have a lot of gems for us about how to make it in the music industry on your own, and uh, I've got my boy Omido here on the podcast. Omido, what's going on, my guy? What's up, man? Yo, it's an honor to be here. Yeah, thank you so much, man. And uh, it's been great. Like, I've definitely seen your come up for a while. Like I had told you earlier, like, my friends and I have definitely, like, seen your beats on YouTube. And, like, we freestyled to your beats. And we've just seen – and now that I'm getting to see you on Instagram, it's cool to, like, watch you make beats. Um, your videos are super high quality. And the beats are obviously dope. And so – Appreciate um, that, man. I'm, I'm really happy to see that, like, a guy who I used to just, like, see his beats on YouTube, I didn't even know who he was. Now I'm, like, seeing your face making them. It's, like, it's such a great transition, and I'm, like, I, I love it. I love it. It's good stuff. I'm a fan for sure. I appreciate that, man. It's, it's definitely been a, a long time. Like, my, my YouTube channel turned 10 years old at the beginning of the summer. So wow. it's been, like, a full decade now. That's man. freaking crazy, it's been man. crazy. Yeah. Well, so talk about, like, how you got into music and, like, maybe like your early life and how somehow your life weaved into a way where you're in the current state that you're in. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I started like, I first installed FL studio when I was in like fifth grade or something. Like I didn't even have like a, a background in music. Like I didn't take like piano and I didn't even like listen to like a lot of like music, like growing up, but I was like, uh, I was like super into YouTube, right? Like I spent like all my time like on YouTube watching videos and I found uh, this guy who was showing how to make videos in FL Studio like three or something. It was like this tutorial video. It was like the worst made tutorial video ever, but I was like, oh, that's like pretty sick. He made this like super cheesy trance beat. <laughs> it was like so old school, man. But I, uh, I downloaded the demo version and like that became like my hobby, like all throughout like, you know, elementary school and high school. It's like, I wasn't into sports. I wasn't into like video games. I was just like, I just had so much fun playing around, making different sounds on the software. And then, you know, being like a huge fan of YouTube and, and finding how to make music from YouTube, I started my own YouTube channel where I would, you know, post songs that I made. And eventually I had, uh, you know, I would spend some time like on Datpiff messaging rappers, just trying to share my beats with people. Didn't even expect like anyone to buy anything. And uh, I was in ninth grade. I finally had some guy pay me for a custom beat. And then all throughout high school and, you know, a couple years after that, like in college, it just it spiraled up from there, eventually leading to what it is today. I mean, it's been crazy. That's freaking, that is nuts. So like, that's interesting that you got started so early on like you were yeah. a kid you were really a little kid when you started doing this stuff <laughs> I was and it's crazy like I mean my YouTube channel is like 10 years old like it's over a decade from the beginning of the summer so it's uh it's been a long time man can you talk about like so I want to I want to know how you've been able to transition um because you got started and it sounds like like, when did you really start seeing, like, money? Like, can you give me, like, a year? Like, what year was it that you started, like, seeing some kind of revenue? Yeah, for sure. So let me try and, and, and think about this here. Because I first installed FL Studio in, like, fifth grade. My beats were, like, absolute garbage. I didn't even post them online. <laughs> and then I posted – I started my YouTube channel in May 2010. Okay. I sold my first beat a month later in June. Uh, and then I think that year I made maybe $200 off of beats. Like I sold like a beat then and a couple, you know, months later sold like another okay. one or two. So mm -hmm. it's like in my first year I sold $200 worth of sales. And then I remember uh, the end of high school, four years later, I remember hitting 30 K in sales. But in a month or just total? No, no, no. Just in total. Like that whole year, like four years total. after I started 30 K. Yeah. But I didn't like, wow. I didn't even like, no, I didn't even care, right? And it was just like, I think just because, you know, being, you're getting into this like so early, like not even know what's going on. And also just like, I didn't even care, like looking at the numbers either. So it was like 30K four years later. And then I'm trying to think how many, I guess six years later, 
what it is today. The past few years, it's been a six-figure income. So it's kind of continuously grown since then. Right, dude, that's freaking... Okay, so you kind of like... Okay, what I want to know is you've been in this for a while. Yeah. What's <laughs> like... What What has been... Well, first of all, let's talk about just the game overall. What have you yeah. seen in terms of transitions from like kind of when you got started to now? And I, and I kind of want to hear from the music production side, but also the marketing side and how to get money. Like what are some of those trends that you've seen that have really like changed a lot? Yeah, I'd say that like the biggest one is probably more on the marketing side that sticks out to me is just how different of a game it is, especially with YouTube. Like, I mean, I was able to make the money I was making when I started because there was like no one on YouTube doing type beats. Like I mm. could post a Drake type beat and it would, you know, shoot number one to the charts. And I, that's how I kind of grew early on and was able to grow just because I started so early. I mean, there's pros and cons to that because now there's a lot more people actually aware of beats and they're searching. So there's a lot more opportunities. But that's one thing how I've noticed is how it's just, it, it's totally different in terms of, you know, the playing field and competition and different resources and opportunities. That's like the big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, production wise, I don't know. I don't know if there really is too many like changes that I've noticed. Like obviously, you know, as music changes year to year, we get into different genres and, and fads and stuff like, you know, trap and, uh, tropical house, all these kind of subgenres. But for me, I've always, since like day one, since I started making beats, I've always experimented with a bunch of different genres. So for me, I've kind of always done what I did 10 years ago. I just make whatever I want to make. And that's what's worked really well for me. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and like, um, one thing I've noticed, like, so, I mean, I, I've only started producing for like three years. I, I was doing rap. 10 years ago and I still yeah. am but so but one of the things I've realized I don't know if it's an evolution um, maybe you can talk more because you've made beats longer but like two of the tools that I use frequently are splice and arcade yeah. and you know splice for example right eight bucks a month and you get access to loops samples and you get drums from like the guys like from Sony <laughs> digital and Zaytoven like they make drum packs it's weird and I'm like whoa yeah. I'm like and then like arcade is literally like you have all these awesome samples loaded into a vst style plug-in and it's only ten dollars a month so for eighteen dollars a month you're getting like it's, set. it's all you high need, level man. yeah so like as a pre and, and so i know how to play piano but like yeah. you don't need to, don't so need to. Yeah. What, what do you think of because i've seen you play a lot of your chords i mean how do you utilize tools like that yeah i use I'm going to be honest, I use a ton of MIDI packs. I use a, a ton of, you know, Splice and Arcade. I put Arcade on every single beat that I have. Right. Uh, I love it because I started getting into music. Like, I've, you know, studied Kanye, Jay Dilla, Pete Rock. These guys were famous for sampling music. So I used to sample a lot of my early beats. You know, 10 years later, what it is today, everyone, you know, wants to get their songs on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music. So personally, I don't want to use uncleared samples anymore. So these companies like, you know, Splice and, and Arcade and, you know, Cymatics, all these people who give you the tools to recreate samples. Like, dude, it's been a lifesaver for me, man. It's like so many people like ask me like, hey, is this beat like sampled? And it's not. It just has some vocal chops from Arcade. And it still fills that void of me not using samples. Yeah, it's... It's incredible. Um, you know, and one thing that I think is, I don't really, so I want to ask you about this. Like I personally, um, I'm very, very detached from what people are saying. Like, I don't really know much about a lot of the dialogue. Like I know, I know I remember hearing early on when I like first was rapping, when I was rapping, I was working with a producer who he was saying like, yeah, using loops is like, you don't do that. Like people don't do that. I'm like, Oh, why not? And he's like, well, it's not the right way to produce. Like it's cheating in a way. He's like, that's not really yeah. producing. And I was like, okay, interesting. So I was a rapper. I didn't know. And I started yeah. producing and then I got exposed to splice and they were like, well, yeah, legally, if you take our samples and use them in your song, you can distribute it. I'm like, why would you not sample them? So I want to know, like, cause I don't, I don't know, like, I yeah. don't pay attention to like things like that anymore. So are there any kinds of those kinds of dialogues or just any in general you can speak on that you kind of have your opinion about? Like I've of course, you know, seen people like on, you know, Twitter saying like, Oh, if you lose 
if you use loops or, or MIDI, uh, it's cheating, you know? But then you see guys like Marshmallow, who downloads a loop from Splice, adds a drum beat to it, all of a sudden it's uh, his song Friends, right? Top of the charts, make millions of dollars off of an $8 subscription to Splice, right? I mean, I don't think it's cheating at all. I see it, yeah. it's the way, you know, like I said, it fills that void for sampling. You know, I take a loop from Splice, I add different drums, I chop it up how I want to. It's like, uh, it's sampling, but it doesn't require that, you know, clearance or paying, you know, all these labels. So I don't think it's, it's cheating at all. If anything, I think it's just, you know, it makes it super easy for producers to make really good music. Right, I think that's really what matters is like, so it, it's interesting, like that same idea of like people kind of shitting on a certain type of method, it, that yeah. happens in like marketing too. Like that happens with like promotion and like marketing and, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, you're, I don't know if you are, are you in the MIDI money group with Gabe and I Andy? am, yeah. That's what yeah, I figured. I've been I in thought, a long time. Yeah. yeah. And so like the idea of funnels is kind of like this thing that like, I think a lot of people are starting to, I think there might be a dialogue around like, a, a, like maybe like a negative connotation around like being yeah. too salesy. Like what, have you kind of ran into like people saying stuff about being salesy or like funnels or. Yeah. Like, well, I've seen some like recently and, and I've seen this for, you know, years, even before MIDI money and funnels that, you know, you see producers who are like, you know, buy exclusive rights to my beats, $5, buy a hundred beats for, you know, $2, all this stuff. And, you know, you see every time like something like that gets somewhat big, all these people kind of freak out and they're like, oh, you know, you're killing the, the beat industry. It's like this is, you know, making every producer look cheap and stuff like this. And I just I don't I don't care, man. Like what works for one producer does that it has no impact on on my brand. Right. You know, right. people can make a living off of selling 100 beats for 17 but or 17 dollars. And right. that's cool. You know, do what they do. Uh, if it works for them, it works, right? <laughs> I mean, there's there's so right. many different ways, right? So I don't, I don't know. I, I don't see how people get really offended at it. I just like mind my business and do my thing, right? It's like a few totally. years ago, um, there was this website, and I haven't heard anything of it since, but it was this website that started out, and it's like, oh, these top beat makers, you know, guys who produce for Lil Wayne, Drake, uh, are all going to be on this and people started freaking out they're like oh you know these guys from the industry are going to come in and you know take all our beat sales and then, and then it's just like for me you know I have good customer service I have a good brand I know the people that I work with they're going to keep working with me even if they can get a beat from like Metro Boomin for a hundred dollars right I give them that customer service and and they like my brand so I don't know what other people do I don't think it really affects you man it's like let other people do what they want. If it works for them, great. Just focus on yourself. And that's kind of what I do. Well, dude, that's okay. That's cool that you just said that because it transitioned to kind of what I was thinking, which was like, the, 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 the real fact is like, we know this, like the fact is people who have that dialogue where they're kind of negative about stuff, they, what they're doing is they're, they're hating and they don't feel like they, they feel like what's about to happen or that kind of method ruins what they do. And they get like insecure yeah. and frustrated because it, it's exactly what happened with the Golden State Warriors. You know, I'm from the Bay, so we were we like the Warriors, and like, yeah, they got Steph and Clay and Draymond. Then they went and got Kevin Durant, and everybody said that they ruined basketball. When it's like, but they didn't. It's just because they couldn't win. It's the same idea. Yeah. And so, I want to ask you though, like you just brought up things like customer service, your brand, people will buy from you no matter what. Can you talk about like how did you build that brand? that's kind of indestructible. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm trying to think how to put it in words because it's been so, so many years, but I think the thing that did a really, like that's, you know, made it really well and, or really good in what it is today is like my personal brand. Like, especially like putting, you know, myself and my videos out there on Instagram. It's like people know what I look like. They kind of know what I talk like, how I act, how I, you know, approach music before they even are comfortable hitting me up right and I mean there's a lot of producers and I was guilty of this for the longest time who you know they have a logo and you don't even know what they look like you know they you don't know what it, their studio is like you don't know how they you know approach music and all this stuff and I was like that dude for so long and then I finally you know learned about Gary V 
and uh, all these, you know, business tactics. And I, I decided to start playing around with my personal brand and it's worked so well. And I, I think it's something that definitely has kept my business alive for 10 plus years now. Right. Yeah. I mean, we've all, anybody who's doing this knows Gary V and it's, it's, yeah. I've, I'm a huge Gary V fan as well. Um, and we've, I've noticed it with Gabe Schillinger from Legion. Like for a while, when I first got exposed to him, we, I had just seen his logo as a shield and the two swords. I didn't even yeah, know who the guy same. was. And when I saw his face, I was like, that's the guy who makes these leads. Like, what? <laughs> like, I can't believe, like, I can't believe it. And I hear him talk and now he's obviously really going hard with the personal brand. Um, and whatnot talk about like uh what you've learned from being in midi money and like the idea i mean let's geek out a little on the business stuff i love talking yeah. about like, what did what have you learned because it sounds like you already had some money coming in before midi money am i right about I that did. yeah i um i think it's been I'm trying to think here just over two years now since i first actually spoke with gabe and uh, he introduced me to the whole concept of like funnels and put me on to Russell right. Brunson. And then I, uh, I've done, you know, a couple of B packs since then, just kind of experimenting with stuff. Um, but it's, it's so interesting, man. And I think like, even if you're not doing like their whole, like, you know, free beats funnel, like lead generation, it's such a good concept to know because, you know, the way I, I you know, get when I read Russell Brunson's books or when I, you know, uh, watch anything from Midi Money or, or go in the Facebook group. It just inspires me because I feel like there's so much more I can be doing. You know, there's so much more I can offer people. There's so much, you know, customer service I can be doing. And uh, I think that there's even like a diagram in that Russell Brunson, uh, tra I think, Traffic Secrets book, where, uh, or dot com secrets book, sorry, where he shows like a value ladder and he just says that basically like people will give you more money if they have the chance to. So it's like that kind of mindset just opens right. up my, like, it just inspires me so much. And I'm just like, man, you know, I could do so much more. And there's people out there who are going to, you know, love every single thing I put out. You know, it's going to be a small chance of people, but they're going to continue to go up the value ladder. And I don't know, it, it inspires me so much, man. Like, and it, it's awesome to see, you know, that a lot of producers can get into this mindset early on. Because, you know, I went, you know, years without any business mindset. Like if I knew that stuff, like how proper business and, and funnels and customer service and branding, dude, if I knew that from day one, 10 years later, dude, I would be like king of the world. man. Yeah, totally. No, I, I feel you. And like, that's something I always try to impose on my audience, right? Like I have an audience of rappers and, and producers and a few entrepreneurs here and there where like, um, I've noticed a lot with just entrepreneurs in general. So like I've, for example, I've worked with like freaking, I consulted for the barbershop. I consulted with like a gym, like people who like own businesses are obviously business yeah. minded. Right. But like, yeah. but like then like we creative people are like not business first. We're very like creativity first. Yeah. And uh, something I learned a lot from Gabe was that the creativity you use for music, you can use that same creativity with business. Yeah, And um, I want to ask you about this too, because this is something I experienced. Um, when I first got exposed to MIDI money in the group, uh, I had already known a lot about funnels, but I never implemented them. And then MIDI money got me to implement them. And I was way too funnel focused and not yeah. marketing focused. I wasn't like, I was just kind of trying to wet my feet and I was too focused on the funnel itself. And then I was like, wait, wait, wait the funnel is only one piece of the entire marketing scheme. So what can you say about, I want to know like your thoughts on the whole 360 degree view of marketing and how that relates to generating revenue. Yeah. And dude, you put it like so well when you said it's just like one small piece, right? I experienced that uh, a lot at the end of last year when I had some of my absolute worst sales months in, uh, in years and it was because I was spending so much time focusing on like these small business aspects that I kind of ditched the content and personal brand side for a bit. Like I, I went like, you know, two or three months without posting a lot of beats or posting a lot on Instagram. I kind of fell off on that side and I was, you know, I was putting all my eggs in this one basket with, you know, this one or two funnels I was doing at the end of the year. And then I launched them and it, they like flopped, right? Like they were so bad. So what I've done 
this year, and especially since, you know, spring when everything got shut down and I, I took a step back and I reevaluated everything was just like, I, I literally have been looking at it from every single like spot. Right. And I'm making sure that, you know, my branding is on point. I'm making sure that I'm posting enough beats. I'm posting enough content about the beats. I'm, you know, replying to messages quickly. It's like all this stuff makes up everything that, that goes on. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, there's like this meme or something I've seen online where it's like people think that producers just, you know, go on FL studio, make a, a beat and they make millions of dollars. There's so much more to it than that. Uh, yeah, there's a lot more to it. I mean, I, <laughs> I was, yeah, like from my own experience, I can say that, but then also I was listening to uh, Gabe's podcast today with Cato. Um, oh, is it? Oh yeah. I got to hear it. it. Yeah. They, I I think it just came out today. Up. Yeah. So I was checking it out and like, they gave asked Cato um if you had to start over and like you didn't have your brand recognition all you had was your knowledge um what would you what would you do and and like I think Gabe ended up kind of like answering it for Cato in a way even though he asked he was like <laughs> he's like because he said for himself he wouldn't start he wouldn't even do it he's like there's so much it? work that goes into it that like it's good that you don't know all the amount of work that you have to put in because if you because you start off you're like optimistic you don't yeah. even understand like you need to end up learning Facebook ads and like when I first started I was like whatever I'm just gonna rap and post and eventually a record label will find me because my fans will put me on and it's like it just does not <laughs> no. work like that at all no man I was way off with that so like um can you talk about like so I want to talk a little bit about producers. I kind of want to transition to artists in a bit, but like yeah. I want to stay on producers right now. What are, um, what are some things that you think producers could be doing? Um, let's break this down like this. Big picture, what are some things producers can be doing? And then let's talk about like maybe a day-to-day. -day. What are some day-to-day -day things? So start off with like, what are like the big picture things producers should be going with? Their direction? what their mindset should be, what they should be trying to do. And then like, what's the day-to-day -day breakdown of that stuff? Yeah. So I think the big thing, like if I, you know, if I was starting over, I would do this like right away is, you know, focus on my personal brand. And, you know, like, like you said on my Instagram, like you see all these videos of me making beats. This is something that if I was a new producer, I would start because, you know, there's so many producers right now making the same types of beats, right? And it's, I'm not hating on that, but there's, you know, if you want a trap beat, you can go on YouTube site, search up free trap beat, and you can find millions of beats to use. Uh, but there's only one of you, right? Like there's only one of you, there's only one of me. So when I put myself in my videos, it's like, no one can copy that because it's only me. So I think if you're putting yourself out there, that's like the greatest, uh, like the, the distinction or something that makes you so unique your brand unique it, it sticks you out from all the crowd so that's something that I would make sure that I'm doing and uh you know I think that would definitely help you like a lot um day to day I think you know giving you know I try and post on my Instagram every single day it's not always possible but it's always right. like it's a goal that I have right so I try and post on Instagram most days of the week like you know videos of me in the studio making beats uh, you know, holding my phone up like a vlog style, showing what I'm, you know, working on or stuff like that. Because, um, yeah, I think that there's a, a really big push right now on, on the content game. Mm. Yeah, I would agree with that, too. And, like, I think that what's cool about getting really good at making content is that no matter what happens with the algorithms or whatever, the thing that I think will not change is the love for content that just the psychology behind yeah. what you've, what you've talked about. So I'm not worried like, cause eventually like Mark Zuckerberg's going to change the yeah. cost of ads. It's going to happen. And like we already saw with Google and we saw with Instagram change their organic reach algorithm. And it's not something I'm worried about because it doesn't mean the game is impossible. It just means you have to change up your idea and your strategy. And I, I love what you're saying. Yeah about just strengthening your personal brand. So talk about like, I, I, talk about the benefits that you've seen from strengthening your personal brand. And then let's get into like some ways that producers can, a day-to-day -day strategy that producers can do. Yeah. I mean, personal brand has been something that like, has I really think has kept my business alive. Like these past few years, 
Like, uh, not that it was going downhill, but, you know, I've seen producers who started at the same time I started, and they're nowhere to be found right now. Like, they move on to other stuff. I don't know what goes on, but I think for me, you know, so many people, like, know what I look like, how I act, and I think that a lot of people trust me, I guess, you know, as soon as they see me. So it's like if they want to buy a beat, they're more comfortable with hitting me up. Um, I kind of just lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, you were talking about how it's, how it's <laughs> <That's> worked. <good. laughs> I was, no, I mean, it's, it's really worked good, man. Like people, you know, are comfortable with hitting me up. Uh, people know that I'm comfortable hopping on, you know, video chats or phone calls with them. So they're not afraid, you know, to, to message me if they want to beat or me to work on a project with them. It's something that's worked you know it, it has worked really well it definitely takes a a bit of a step out of your comfort zone like you know me personally I'm I'm like not an outgoing person at all but I've had you know a couple of years where I've worked on it where I'm now you know comfortable talking in front of a camera like this and right. you know, speaking with artists on the phone it, it takes a bit of a, a leap for some people but it can be totally worth it yeah you know um do you know who um have you ever heard of this guy named Dan Pena before you, got, yeah, you should look him so. up. He's, he's dope. He's like this old guy. Like I want to say he's in his seventies maybe. And he's like, a yeah, he's really wealthy. And what he does is he coaches billionaires. You got to go check him out. His content's amazing. <laughs> um, and uh, he was on Vlad TV and he said that like, dude, it's something like 98% of the billionaires in the world are like introverts or something like that. Yeah. I it's some that, really weird talk. And I was like, whoa, I never would have, cause I'm super extrovert. Yeah. And I just, I never would have imagined like that, that stark of a number. And then, and, and just like, wow. Like, and I've noticed like talking to Gabe, like he's also an introvert. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, you know, wow, <laughs> like, wait a minute, there's some pattern here. It's crazy. And uh, talk about like overcoming that. Like, did you have like struggles being an introvert trying to get into this whole like personal branding game? Uh, I don't think I had many, like, like, I don't know, like I found Gary V like, and that's kind of what inspired me. So I was like, you know, what he like says and everything, like I started, you know, paying attention to him and I was super inspired. Uh, it definitely took like a couple of years for my content and my personal brand to get really good. Like I've done like, you know, these vlogs and, and videos and podcasts before that are just absolute garbage. Cause I didn't know how to speak in front of a camera. Right. So, I mean, it definitely takes a, a bit of time to, <laughs> to perfect it. And I still feel like even right now, there's so much more I can improve on, you know, with my YouTube videos and my Instagram. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it definitely takes time, but you just, I think, you know, if you work on it, it's, it really does have benefits to it. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, no, you're right. I agree with that. I think like, um, I think like one thing that I'm noticing with a lot of people that I talk to is like, people have trouble figuring out what to post or yeah. like if somebody would even care about what they're talking about. You know what I mean? Um, what, what do you like on that note, like just what to post, like what, what's, what would be your feedback for somebody if they're like, Oh, I don't know what to post or how often should I post? Yeah. Um, I struggled with this a lot and my biggest thing was just overthinking it. Like I would think about, Oh, what can I post? Is anyone going to like this? And I would overthink so much that I wouldn't post at all you know what I mean so it's like even now like I, I recently started a second YouTube channel where I post tutorials and vlog like not vlogs but just kind of like behind the scenes type of videos right and I just like I started it at the beginning of the summer I originally started two years ago and I'm kind of kicking myself now because like I wish that I just posted, you know, and just got better and better over those two years instead of overthinking, you know, what to post. Cause I went two years without kind of posting on this channel. And now right. that I'm doing it, I'm, I'm realizing like, you know, if I actually started doing stuff two years ago, you know, learning the ropes, then perfecting it over a two year period, I'd probably be two years ahead of where I am now. So, I mean, right. it's definitely something I think that you learn as you do. Like you can't just sit there and, and it's not like the, the first beat or the first, you know, piece of content you're going to post is going to be the one that takes off. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a bit of time to perfect it. Right. But I think that's something that, you know, kind of keeps me going. It's, you know, I know that maybe the next one I'm going to post is going to be the one that goes viral. Right. Maybe the next beat that I post is going to be the one that gets a placement. Maybe the next video I post is going to go 
you know, crazy in the YouTube algorithm. So it's, that's kind of what keeps me going, but it's like, you know, you never know what's going to happen unless you actually try and put stuff out there. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, and I think too, like what I'm noticing that has helped my content is the outreach aspect of it. And like, for example, I think Instagram personally is the best yeah, platform 100%. for outreach. I think others are yeah. good too, but I, I, I just, the cape of, I don't know. I just think Instagram's really, that's how we connected was Instagram. Yeah. Like purely, definitely. you know? Um, and, and I think that, um, I think that that's helped my content. Like when I reach out to a lot of people frequently, like when I make that part of my daily schedule to say, okay, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go on 12 hashtags and on each one, I'm going to leave 10 comments on, and that makes it 120 interactions. My yeah. content, like just over time, like I think I did that for like 20 or 25 days in a row. And it like, I just saw my Instagram just going up, 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 like pretty, pretty uh, exponentially. And I was like, yeah. okay, that is clearly a missing piece. Cause I used to just, I've never had much of a problem making and posting content. I just was like, whatever, bro, I'll just dairy. Yeah. I just document. So I'm going to do that. But <laughs> yeah. my, my, my stuff wasn't getting views. And I realized that that outreach part is harder and it's more important because that's the, that's the part that is going to get people to see you. And actually that's how the algorithm works. I mean, people who interact with you are more likely to see your content. That's just how the technology of Instagram works. I've noticed. Um, yeah. You know, and so that's, that's, really important that I think a lot of people miss out on. I think a lot of producers miss out on that too. With like, they want to sell their beats, but they're not willing to like really interact with people and show genuine love. I think people try to like get that sale. Right yeah, away. I know. Yeah, no, and I, I've been like that too. Like, especially like, I, I have, you know, had a lot of times where I've focused too much on sales and the times where I focus too much on sales, you know, those leads my worst sales months right those are the times right. where like I don't get sales right I mean like even like I was talking about you know the end of last year I was working mm -hmm. on these funnels and I was so like sales oriented like that was kind of all I was caring about I kind of like almost you know drove myself crazy just focusing on all these like funnels and then uh the past few months I haven't done anything with funnels I've strictly been posting content and I've had some of my best sales months ever. Like this, this year is going to be like a, a record breaking year for me. And I think, you know, wow. just focusing on content, uh, all these, you know, conversations and relationships that I'm building with people, like it's, it's really good. You know, for example, like uh, I've been posting all these videos of me making beats and I have this second YouTube channel where I'm, uh, I'm showing myself making beats in the studio, the, the YouTube channel I've only, you know, taken seriously for like, two, three months now. And it only has like 500 subscribers, but I've already made a few hundred dollars from people buying beats or paying me for other projects because they're seeing the content that I'm posting. So it's like, I see, you know, a lot of value in, in the content game right now. And I think it's, it's going to get even more important in the next, you know, years to come. Yeah. I mean, I know from like all the money that I've made from coaching people it's all been because of content it's all people who've yeah. literally just seen me like they see it yeah posting yeah it's the same exact idea that you just said too and i've noticed that i think that um okay i want i want to ask you this too like what about people who maybe like like i don't know like what if they're in a situation where they I mean, how, what, what is some content they can post if maybe like their setup isn't yeah. like, cause you and I are talking about posting, like we post behind the scenes content. Like that's your stuff is like you yeah, playing and making the beats. But what if you're like in a, and I can, I have that capability here just in my little garage setup. Like yeah. but what if you're like, what if you don't even have your own recording setup? Like, let's say you're an artist and you don't have your own recording setup or like yeah. you're a producer and like all you have is your laptop. Cause maybe you're in between like moving apartments or houses and like you, you can't even like post that type of content. What's other content that they could post that, or any ideas like that you think people could go with? Yeah. Like you don't always need like a, a you know, camera and a fancy setup. 
like you can post stuff off your phone or you can even, you know, find and, and make like infographics and share them on Instagram. Like, yeah, it's good you know, share like important links to people like, you know, or if you have an email list, what I've done before is I've educated people through my email blast about, you know, putting their music on DistroKid or something, right? So it's like I'm helping out people and all I'm using is, is my computer or my phone. It's like stuff that I'm doing with, you know, I don't need a fancy setup for that stuff, right? Right. Let me ask you a question now that you brought that up. So one thing that I'm kind of struggling with right now is the idea of the follow-up, right? People say like the, a lot yeah. of the money is in the follow-up, right? So I'm, I'm getting pretty okay at like my front end, which is like, I've got a solid converting ad. I'm getting great opt-ins. My sales, I'm still, one of the problems I'm still trying to break even with the sales, but I kind of know what to do to adjust. Where I'm yeah. having that problem is, when somebody finishes my first five days, that welcome sequence, what then? Like, what am I supposed to do after that? Like, I kind of like have been emailing yeah. people like once, twice a week because I have a pod. So I'm like, I'll just send people the podcast and maybe some YouTube videos. But like, how often should I be emailing my list? Let's say I don't have products. Like I don't have, maybe I don't have enough beats or I don't know. Like yeah. I like am so like, I'm lost on the follow-up part. Like what kind of tips can you, can you provide for that? Yeah, this is uh, interesting because it's like literally something that I'm like kind of, you know, uh, tweaking at the moment, like with my email list. Because um, I, I don't like to spam my email list a lot. Like I don't like to spam them like, you know, once a week. Like if they finish like my initial sequence, I maybe will do like twice a month and I'll be like, hey, you know, here's some new beats that I put out recently. And uh, sometimes what I actually try and do is in my emails, I try and end it with a question too so it encourages a follow-up and i just say like you know hey which beat was your favorite or one that i've used a, a number of times is like you know hey have you dropped any new music recently send me your latest music so i can check it out and they're like oh yeah check out my recent like album so they respond to it wanting me to check out their album and uh it just continues the conversation there that's that's actually something that i use like pretty often whenever i'm i'm trying to you know continue a conversation is i end it with a question that okay so like so you just gave me an idea like with the whole like asking people if they've dropped new music i haven't even, i don't know why i didn't even think of that bro that's yeah that's a great idea um yeah one thing i noticed like you know i'm on gabe's email list and um every time he sends an email now i've been reading them to try to study his emails and i just saw yesterday he sent an email and he, it actually started with a question it was the first thing hey did you check out the first yeah. two episodes and i was like oh wow like I hadn't thought of that, like starting with a question, then he goes into his whole message yeah, too. Yeah, explains it all. Yeah, that's interesting. So like, um, I want to know also, I mean, dude, by the way, gems, like you just dropped them for me. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I know yeah. I have more clarity already. I do it all the time, man. Like it's even like, I, I know that there's like this kind of, I don't know, meme that goes around that's like, you know, as soon as you send people a PayPal link, they just leave you on scene. I always, I send people a PayPal link and I'm like, let me know if you're paying now or like, are you able to pay now? Like I leave it as a question. So it's like, I know they have to reply and it just encourages something. I don't know. I just, I, it's something that yeah. I picked up that I always do. It's smart also because it's kind of funny. Like same thing with the Instagram algorithm with Instagram. If you get people to DM you, if you are creating engagement and traffic towards your page, you're yeah. more likely that your page gets your content gets delivered. It's the same with emails. Your emails are more likely to fall into people's primary on their inbox because you know yeah. with gmail you have all these tabs you've got like yeah, the primary. It's, so it's, that, it's the same thing if they reply to your emails it's more likely to go into their primary because you're seen as a contact that they actually know yeah for sure and another thing i do with emails too i just want to mention is that not all my emails are always like salesy like sometimes i just send out emails for like updates or something it's just like hey you know i just dropped a new like uh you know ep on streaming services or something like that like it doesn't always have to be so salesy right and i think that's something that works well for me too yep i'm noticing that i've noticed that with gabe as well like he just was he's now pushing his uh his podcast i think there was there was one email he had sent um a, a, about a week ago and basically the call to action was to send him a dm on instagram and i was like this is very interesting and i asked him about that when i had him on the podcast last week i said why did you do that what was the why do you not sell on every email because russell brunson sells on every email yeah he's trying to get people on a training and eventually that's gonna 
And I said, why, why Gabe don't you? And he's like, just because like, it's good to create relationships with people where they're going to check your email and not feel like they're going to get sold because then yeah, when you do 100%. sell, it's like more, um, it's just more likely it, it's, it's actual psychology. It's kind of funny. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? 100%, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So talk about like, I, I'm, I'm curious about this too. I've struggled with this cause I'm, I'm still kind of a new producer. Um, I'm having a lot of trouble justifying creating a beat store because I'm so like of the click funnels cult and I'm so like drinking the producer funnel Kool-Aid. Yeah. I don't, I don't really. And, and I'm going to say one other thing about it too, is that it takes a long ass time to upload beats. Like you upload a beat to the beat store and it's like the wave MP3 and the stem sometimes takes a hell of a long time. And I have to kind of like let my computer sit there and it's just like, so can you, but, but I, I'm very open-minded though. Like, yeah. Can you explain to me like, what's the justification behind having a beat store and what are like, what's the revenue, the sales and just like, why do you have one? What's the point? Yeah. So for me, like I've had a beat store for, you know, years, right? Like it used to be on SoundClick and now it's, you know, on my own omidobeats.net. Um, and, and I know like, you know, I'm on BeatStars too. Um, but for me, it's like, I want to have kind of a homepage where people can go and, you know, look at my content, right? Like I'm not doing like the whole like five free beats, like the whole funnel thing right now. And I, but I still want people to, you know, find basically a homepage of my content. So that's why I think that having a beat store is really important. Yeah. Because like, you know, people, you know, they'll hear you making a beat on Instagram or they'll hear a beat on YouTube. And then it's like, well, where do they go from there? Right. What if they, you know, they don't know like all about funnels and stuff, you know, they see other producers have these beat stores and then they want to get a beat from you. But if the only thing you're leading them is to a funnel there, they might not really know, you know, what to do with that exactly. So, right. uh, I don't know, for, like it's, for me, it's just become a habit of just like, I know what you mean. Like it definitely takes a while and it's like annoying to upload like every MP3 and then right. tagged MP3 and take all these artists in it. But it's just become like a, a habit for me and it's dude, it's worked so good. Like I've literally got to a point now, like I've had my, you know, domain name and my website for many years now. But when I go on, um, what is it? Google analytics. Uh, one of the most, top traffic sources for people going to omidobeats.net is literally people going there directly like people have heard my music for years and they know my website now so they just they go on their phone or their laptop and they just like hey i need beats so we're gonna go to omidobeats.net that's it's worked so well for me man wow that's okay that's super I've kind of like implemented it in, in a lot of people's uh, brains, I guess. But, you know, I know people too that like they, they message me or they comment on my Instagram post or like, Hey, you know, I, I still check out your, uh, your beat store, your website, you know, a couple times a week to see what's new. Wow. Really? Yeah. It's, it's been like a lot of years, but I mean, just, you know, I constantly try and push people to my beat store. Right. So I guess that doing that for a long time has you know, paid off like that. That's really interesting. I really appreciate you sharing that because now I feel, I kind of feel more motivated to like put that out. I know like I had talked to Wishmaster a minute ago yeah. um, and I asked him the same thing. Like, what's, why do you still have a bead store? And he's like, well, I mean, out of my whatever 10 grand I'll make in a month, I'll make like two or three off the bead store. You know, like there's still people who yeah, want one beat, man. you know, and they still want to like, they just want that one beat, you know, and they, they just, that's all they yeah. need or they need the exclusives. And if your funnel is not offering exclusives, they like don't want it. So it's like, why cut people off? Yeah, no, it's good to have. And I mean, it just, it looks like, I think it looks really professional too when you have your own website and you can, you know, put anything you want on it. Uh, you can, you know, outline kind of everything that you do on it. I've had, you know, uh, times where I've had, you know, companies that I work with who, you know, commission me for making custom beats for them or whatever they they get in touch with me through my website because they go to my website first and then they see all what i have to offer and then they they message me from there yeah i think like yes you know i, I now that i'm thinking about it too like if somebody were to google Lizzie the gifted or if they google omito um omito beats or whatever and like your website pops up it, it's almost like you have kind of control of what people are going to see at that point yeah um, definitely yeah, which I think is the same if like your Instagram pops up, but if you have your own website, you have even more control of like 
how it's laid out. Like you can have people buy stuff right away, which you can't do on an Instagram account, obviously. So yeah, I kind of see that. Um, I see that. Let me, let me ask you this. Like when it comes to, I'll just literally ask you like a question that I really need help with. Like, so I'm about to get into way more outreach on Instagram and I want to do direct messaging. So I'm not focused as much on, I want to comment on tons of hashtags. Now I'm more focused on, I'm going to find, I want to go for five to 10 artists a day that I really like and do like some kind of like a, like a selfie video of playing a beat and being like, dude, I could hear you on this beat if you want to let me know. But so where I'm struggling is should I be trying to pitch them individual, like beat store, individual beats? Because my mindset is telling me to tell them to go get the free beats because then they'll start the relationship off. Yeah. Off free or you, you just send them that beat for free i don't know i just i'm so for some reason my brain just gets so focused on send them to the funnel so that i can get their email and get them on the list like because i like tell me about my, my like where i'm at where you think i should probably be going yeah i don't it's uh it's it's tough because i haven't ever done that approach before okay um but i think like it's a it's a good idea to kind of lead people through that funnel and i mean if you tell people like hey i got like you know a couple free beats that i want to send you i mean that that sounds like a good offer right away so i don't i don't think that it's a it's a bad thing at all but i don't know one thing that i've kind of found recently is that it's been hard for me to push people away from instagram too so mm. it's like when i'm running ads on instagram right now uh, cause I've, I do $5 ads every single day, but I just boost one of my posts and, and I lead it to, um, take people to your profile because I've had a, a really hard time with directing people away from Instagram, you know, to a funnel or my website or my YouTube channel. And I've kind of found like for me, you know, every, every producer is different. Every producer this will be different for, but for me, it's, I have a lot more success when I'm keeping everything on Instagram. So it's like, if I message somebody, I'll just keep them on Instagram and try and sell beats through that. Um, you know, same, like I never really had a lot of success with my funnel ads either. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Not a whole lot. Like for me, it was just like, I don't know. I, 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 even my YouTube channel now, it's like, it's hard for me to get people to swipe up and, and go to a specific link, but a lot of people will engage with my stuff just on Instagram. I don't know. It's kind of weird. No, that's not weird at all. I'm sure Instagram wants that because they're trying to keep. Yeah, they want to keep people on the app, right? I mean, dude, yeah. like I've been promoting my posts, I think since like March now, like five dollars a day, like my you know beat making videos. I'm just doing it like you know taking people to my profile. I've seen like you know a lot of you know uh, engagement increase, followers increase. I guess maybe because it's not so salesy too. It's like people just hear a beat and then they're like, oh, you know. I'm at his profile now. He's not asking me to buy anything. I'm going to follow him and see what he's into. It's something that it works like it's worked really well for me the past few months. So you're just boosting some of your posts for five bucks a day. And that's been, yeah, I think dude, really legit, helping you man. get followers. Wow. It is. Yeah. Cause my thing was like at the beginning of, you know, Corona, like the shutdowns, everything, like everything's shut down here in March. Right. And I was yeah. thinking like, you know, damn, like everyone's like, you know, losing jobs. Like I didn't know what was going to happen with beat sales. Right. Like I was like, dude, th this could be the thing that just like makes my beats just absolutely die. So right. I took that as a, as a time where I didn't want, I didn't want to be like super salesy. Right. I know people in the world, you know, people are losing jobs. Every, no one knows what's going down. I had a few people who are going to buy my beats. Tell me it's like, yo, I'm out of a job right now. I don't know what to do. I can't buy this beat. So I took that as an opportunity to really double down on my content. And I'm like, yo, I'm just going to make content, yeah. get in front of as many people as I can. And then, you know, when everything blows over, it'll get back to normal. People will be able to start buying, you know, have this increased fan base. And dude, it's been working like, it's been working really, really well. And it's something that keeps me motivated too. Totally. And we're talking about, you're just like on your phone boosting, like just like that. Yeah, dude. Crazy. It's like, it's, you know, cause I, I was like, my I was kind of. I now like I'm literally I'm like I know we're in this interview and I was like fuck dude like I want to do it right now because I know yeah. how and I didn't think it was that effective. Dude, I kind of had a mini panic there at the at the beginning of you know shutdowns and, and Corona because I was like, dude, I got to get content over here like ASAP, man. So I'm just gonna start boosting my posts. And even now, it's like I mentioned earlier, like I have a goal to post on Instagram every single day. 
I, I can't post on Instagram every single day, man. It's just, it takes yeah, way too hard. much time. I run out of content to post. So like sometimes I like, even if I'm on like, you know, a week away or somewhere or like away for a week, I always want to make sure that I have my boosted ads going like my boosted posts. Cause then it's at least right. I'm doing something somewhat active, even if I'm not posting content every single day. Right. Yeah, totally. No. And like, and like, I think, um, I think that's something I want to do like right after this, I'm about to try it. Like, cause I've done it before and I was like, Oh cool. I got likes and comments on that one post, but I never have gotten followers. Is that, do you think because I maybe just didn't do it long enough? Like when did you really start to see like a constant, nice growth of followers and like real traffic? Yeah. Mine, uh, it's definitely been kind of like combining it with like content and boosting posts. Like I boost posts more frequently than I post content uh, but I, I think for me, like the thing that I've, you know, like I mentioned earlier is that I don't try and drive people away to, you know, a website or a YouTube link or an email or something. I'm literally just keeping it on the app and all the objective or whatever is to drive people to my profile. Right. So that, that's like what works really well for me. I, I'm literally going to try it cause I'm posting so much different types of content that I need. I think I missing that idea yeah. just like it's just something that like it, it's helped me a lot and dude i've literally had like so many people like the over the summer like message me they're like dude i saw this ad i love it like <laughs> i'm i you know i found this video off of an ad how much for the beat like it's it's been working really well for me man like that's very interesting. five bucks a day through that thing and i think you know long term like it's helping like you know, people get more familiar with me and, and my personal brand, like we were talking about earlier, so it can carry me forward to different platforms and kind of keep me above water, you know, during Corona yeah. and everything going on. Let me, let me ask you this, the audience, like now we're going to get really granular for a minute. And I, I yeah. like with the audience, do you do a cold audience or are you boosting it to people who've already engaged with your Instagram? I do it so I don't like I know that you can get like super targeted and if you go on like Facebook ads manager you can get like super super targeted I have some pretty basic targeting set up in my boosted posts I just do like you know people age like 19 to 30 who are somewhat interested in in music like music production or Drake right. or I kind of like experiment with a few things like that but uh I don't know I don't do it to people who have already engaged with and who have already engaged with my content. Okay. Um, I don't know. I've just kind of been doing it to new people and it's been working Got really it. well. I'm going to try that out for sure. I, I definitely want to. Yeah. yeah man, I, definitely like, I think, that. I think like it definitely will take some time to like, until you start to see if it's actually working. Like that was like, I would boost posts and I would do ads, but I would only run them for like maybe like a week or something. And then if it was like, Oh, it's not working. Like uh, whatever it's not working right but for me it's just like you know doing five bucks a day for like two, four months right now <laughs> it's like it's i figured out that it's it's really working for me so you've really gone five dollars a day for four months every day in a row no no i've had like a few days off but like right. i mean i just like uh, i go on my phone and i'm just like oh, okay let me boost this ad for like you know, four days, right? Spend $5. I'll come back to it after four days. And if it's like working really well, I'll do this. Or if I've posted another video in between then, maybe I'll boost that one. But my thing is just like, I always want to have some type of ad running. It, it just, cause it'll just like, it'll constantly kind of drive traffic towards my profile. Even right. if I can't post every single day, it's something right. out there is driving content or driving traffic to my profile. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I totally, uh, yeah, yeah, I totally get that. I mean, I think like from, I, I've spent a lot of time with ads and gotten really into it. And I think yeah, one other advantage too is like when I do run the, hey, here's free beats, like, and it's like a traffic campaign where I'm trying to get people to like go to this landing page, I can create an audience of people who have engaged or visited my Instagram profile. And so yeah. running these ads that you and I are talking about, these little boosting ads is great. Cause then once somebody lands on your Instagram page and spends like even one second that I can target them. You can because, do it. Yeah. There's a, like, right. a lot more that you can do with it. For me, I haven't like had kind of the time or like effort to really get detailed. Like I know I could do like super detailed and make all this stuff. But for me, it's just something I've just been like kind of focusing on the side. It's just like something small I'm doing just to kind of help out right now until I 
you know, eventually get my funnels back up and figure out right. a new product to do. But I, I've just figured it like in the meantime, you know, when I'm not working on any product launches, I want to at least do something small to help that traffic. And so it's just like, even, you know, if there's any producers out there like listening, who is like thinking like, Oh, you know, I can't post beats every single day. You know, I'm still in school. I'm, I have another job. What can I do? It's, I just do this little thing. And uh, it kind of keeps me active on days that I'm not active. That's really cool. And I want to clarify one thing before people run and start spending money that, that like, um, like for everyone listening right now, like Omido does something that is really smart. He puts his freaking face in there and makes really nice looking videos. And it's yeah. not about the idea that Omido has a nice camera. It's the idea that Omido's in the video making the beat, which makes the videos more entertaining it's the same with my content the content that's performed really well for me is where i'm in the content I'm in all my content right and so if you're yeah. a producer and you're making just a, a beat visualizer with your logo just because you run ads doesn't mean you're going to get followers that's not a good piece no. of content. yeah like I've, I've found content you know that like works a lot better than others recently and like the ones where i'm in my studio like working beats and then maybe I'll show like a little screenshot at FL studio or I've had a few videos recently on my Instagram where I'm actually like talking like I'm like okay first thing I did was I made this drum pattern and then I show it and I'm like now I want to you know make this piano chords or whatever like those videos are, are really good and it's also like I've done it enough times now that like you go on my profile and you just see it's like all every post is like myself <laughs> so it's just like right. I don't know people they, they really get to know who I am yeah, no, absolutely. For sure. I mean, that's one of the, that was one of the things that got me excited to connect with you is that I knew I looked at you and I knew you. And then it's funny when you mess it, when we message each other back and forth, I, I know what you look like. So like yeah. I have a better connection than if I'm like, I message a lot of other producers and I don't know what they look like. And it's, it's a little weird. Like I only see their logo and I'm like, yeah, kind of weird. I almost don't even know if I want to say the word bro. Cause you might be a girl. I don't know. <laughs> you might no, not want to, like, right. Yeah, it's like, and go back to like a, a really conversation of like the biggest like things I've noticed from when I started making beats on YouTube in, in you know, 2010 from right now, you know, I see a, a huge push on the, on the personality, right? I think that's something that like, because nobody did that. You didn't know what any producer was. You just heard all these beats. Now it's like, I think it's something that, you know, if you're putting your, your personality out there, it sets you, you know, apart from any competition. Yeah. Dude, absolutely. Well, look, I know we've gone for about an hour and I want to wrap it up. I don't want to take too much of your time, but you know, if you could just give, um, where can people find, by the way, before you even plug yourself, I'm going to say whatever Omido says to do right now, you guys need to do it. Cause he's got like the dope. <laughs> if you're a rapper and you're looking for beats or you're just like our producer and you want to hear some inspiration on how to make some better beats, you should go watch Omido's YouTube channel, whatever he's going to say and go to his website. So like tell them where they can find you the best places. Yeah, the, like my Instagram at Omido Beats is uh, the place where I'm most active. I do want to plug my new YouTube channel, which is Omido Beats 2. It's my uh, second YouTube channel that I started that's a lot more engaging content because I know a lot of producers are going to watch this. Um, I post a lot of videos about, well, I post videos once a week, but videos about uh, making some beats in different genres, getting really creative with beats and also, you know, telling my story about how I sell beats and everything like that. So Omido Beats 2, my new channel, trying to grow it. So help me out and subscribe to that. Yes, guys, go. I've looked at a lot of your videos. They're awesome videos. So guys, go check them out there. I appreciate that, man. Um, yeah, go follow Omido. And like, Omido's a very engaging guy. He'll probably like respond to your comments or DMs. And it's very yeah, rare that- of course. Yeah, it's rare to find producers of your caliber who are that engaging with their audience. It's really cool. So uh, anyway, man, I just really appreciate your time a lot. This is actually an interview I've wanted to do for a while. And I just, I don't know, <laughs> I never like had the courage to just DM you and ask you, but I was like, bro, fuck it, just ask him, bro. He'll probably say yes. Yeah, so. no, I appreciate it, man. It's been an honor. It's, it's been a good convo. Yeah, yeah, man. Thank you so much. So, man, I appreciate you. Like, uh, keep doing what you're doing and we'll connect again soon. Thank you. Thanks, man. Of course. Awesome. All right, brother. Take care. Yep.